Welcome. I'm an AI-created avatar, and I'd like to introduce SANS fellow Frank Kim. He's here to share insights into the evolving landscape of generative AI and strategies for managing the associated risks during AI deployments within your organization. After watching this short video, you and your team can delve deeper into the subject by taking the new SANS course, AI Security Essentials for Business Leaders. Now, here's Frank. Hello, I'm Frank Kim, fellow at the SANS Institute. I'm happy to share some insights into the dynamic world of generative AI, a technology teeming with potential to drive innovation within our businesses. We are all, of course, striving to reach our goals faster, cheaper, and better. Whether it's developing our products, building our brand, or enabling sales, we're constantly seeking advantages over our competition. Advantages that lower costs, increase quality, and reduce our time to market. In this fast-paced world, the race for efficiency and excellence is more intense than ever. It's not just about staying ahead, it's about evolving our organizations in ways that will keep us there. And that brings us to what is perhaps the most significant development in decades, a development that is revolutionizing the approach organizations are taking to develop products, software, and services across almost every industry. Of course, I'm talking about artificial intelligence, specifically about generative AI. Gen AI is not merely an advancement, it's a transformative force redefining creative and operational processes in organizations far beyond simple task automation. Gen AI is about generating new, innovative ideas and solutions, pushing the boundaries of what we thought was possible in design, creativity, and problem solving. It's a tool that complements and elevates human ingenuity, allowing us to achieve more with less and to innovate at an unprecedented pace and scale. However, as they say, with great power comes great responsibility and the advent of Gen AI is not without its challenges. We are already seeing almost viral usage of AI tools like ChatGPT across our organizations. For example, a recent survey found that 21% of employees are already using it on a daily basis in the workplace. As a result, many of us are considering how to simultaneously drive AI adoption, understand and manage risks, and get ahead of whatever policy gaps are rapidly developing. The topic of AI has left many of us both excited and concerned. To move forward, it's important to take a deep breath, break this down into manageable pieces, and sort out a high-level strategy for managing your AI adoption journey. Let's take a look at the major challenges surrounding Gen AI usage and how we can develop a risk-based response. Before we move into specifics, it's important to develop a brief understanding of how this technology works, what Gen AI is and isn't, and why it can be so useful in many applications. We'll keep this at a very high level. Most Gen AI tools, and by these I mean chatbots like OpenAI's ChatGPT, Google Bard, and Microsoft's Copilot suite of solutions, document summarizers, all of them are based on what's known as large language models, or LLMs. They work by taking your input and statistically predicting, based on a very large set of data, what word or words should follow. It is, at its essence, an algorithmic version of a complete this sentence. You give it your input, called a prompt, and it calculates its reply by following simple rules. For example, if you ask ChatGPT, Humpty Dumpty sat on a blank, it replies, Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. It does this not because it understands anything, it just looks up your prompt, calculates based on trillions of pre-learned language samples, what should follow, and gives its answer. Two important takeaways from this are pretty simple. It isn't thinking or reasoning or understanding. It's calculating. And it is doing this based on its vast database of training data. In almost all cases, the training data for these systems is a very large portion of the internet itself. Keep this in mind, as there are a number of reasons this matters. Regardless of how we are accessing LLMs via a chat interface, application, or some kind of programming integration, they are all built this way. At any rate, while this seems simple enough, constructing a good prompt and using the system, sometimes, while passing some of our own data, can yield surprisingly good results. These type of tools are very good at writing, summarizing, interacting, and creating documents and images. The better the prompt, the better the result. Understanding how to write and optimize prompts is called prompt engineering, which is becoming one of the most desired skill sets today. So given a good prompt 
and using a statistical calculation, we get a well-written result. Why is this a big deal? You may be asking, what can we use this for? Organizations are now using GenAI for a myriad of tasks, from writing marketing material, creating interactive support tools, writing code, summarizing and analyzing documents, images, presentations, and financial data. The potential applications are vast, and these examples only scratch the surface. Integrations with the tools we use every day are here as well. Everything from email and spreadsheets to customer relationship management, healthcare, and legal software are all incorporating Gen AI into their offerings. The impact will likely be staggering. Estimates by Goldman Sachs Research are that generative AI will lift global GDP by 7% within 10 years. And McKinsey Global estimates that AI could add between 2.6 and 4.4 trillion in annual value to the global economy. In addition to the technical capability and potential global impact of generative AI, it's important to recognize its potential to positively enhance our corporate culture. Gen AI is exceptional at automating simple tasks, and in doing so, it allows our employees to focus on more strategic, creative work, fostering a culture of innovation and continuous learning. Embracing AI means not just advancing our technical capabilities, but also moving toward a more forward-thinking, adaptable, and inclusive corporate culture. So given a good degree of impact and urgency, let's frame some of the common risks and discuss some mitigation strategies. Over-reliance. That's when a user depends too heavily on the AI's output, potentially at the expense of correctness, critical thinking, or decision-making. Over-reliance has emerged as one of the primary risks associated with using generative AI in our workplaces. While many of us agree we should encourage usage, we need to also make sure we do so without sacrificing the quality of work products. Reducing this risk is dependent on implementing usage guidelines, training users, and ensuring human oversight, known as having a human in the loop. Gen AI results, which contain harmful bias, create another risk to our organizations, which needs to be managed. This bias is not intentional and simply results because the data sets used to train LLMs frequently contain inherent bias themselves. Remember, they're trained on the internet data, which we all know is neither free from bias nor always correct. Good prompt engineering, keeping a human in the loop, and bias screening are all ways to reduce these risks and problems it may cause. While we're on the subject of internet training data, it is also critical that users keep in mind that Gen AI output can sometimes be wrong. And when asked, the AI will usually double down on the correctness of its answer. While some may claim this is a major problem, it's also manageable if we properly train our people and use AI correctly. Data security when using these tools is also something to keep top of mind as our organizations are expanding their AI usage. Most Gen AI systems are not only trained on the internet, they're also consuming and learning from our interactions. They can learn from our prompts, data we send them, and our reactions to what they deliver. These machine learning algorithms can end up merging data we supply with their LLM data and subsequently make it part of responses to other users' prompts. They put in their prompt, and they potentially end up seeing some of our data. If we are using these type of systems, we should never include private data, such as financial or customer data or private intellectual property in our prompts. Again, a combination of proper usage, policy, and training can help reduce this data loss risk. Most LLMs today also have controls which can be set to limit this data learning behavior. Transparent AI usage, when to use AI and when not to, are all covered under ethical risks. And we, as organizational leaders, need to make sure we are defining standards for both. Often, individual units need to consider how and when AI usage reporting needs to happen. But if you have overall responsibility for managing Gen AI, you need to have some kind of usage inventory, at least at a high level. Acceptable usage guardrails need to be put in place to make sure we're not replacing human wisdom and judgment with Gen AI's calculations. Defining usage and reporting guidelines and training users on these guidelines are essential. From a Gen AI usage perspective, we also need to understand and consider the impact of using AI for content creation on our ability to register and maintain copyrights on our intellectual property. As of today, material created with Gen AI, documents, images, etc., 
simply can't be copyrighted in the United States. To slightly complicate this, this is not always a black and white ruling. Some creative works can start with or involve generative AI and undergo significant original work by an author or artist can subsequently be copyrighted. When we are considering the balance between the advantages of Gen AI, our contributions, copyright, and the like, it is advisable that we work with our legal teams to sort out the best way to proceed. If we are implementing, integrating, or developing AI systems at our organizations, we also need to consider how to do so while minimizing the cyber risks associated with LLM software development. As with any new technology, there are a number of new vulnerabilities we need to address and make sure that our design follows proper security first principles. Our engineers should take a look at OWASP's Top 10 for LLMs, which is an excellent resource for outlining these types of risks and suggested mitigations. When we are considering purchasing or using any Gen AI software or system, we also need to remember that these are almost always cloud software as a service platforms and need to be reviewed by our security teams as well. Our security teams should also play a key role in our AI planning processes. Lastly, and possibly most urgently, I strongly recommend that you create a team within your organization to create AI-related policy and operating procedures. For the team, consider some combination of AI innovators, legal, cybersecurity, IT, HR, and product leadership. The policy needs to define AI's context at your organization, define acceptable and ethical usage, and formulate the standard operating procedures for procuring and utilizing Gen AI software and solutions. This can definitely be a challenge, but AI policy development can serve as a rallying point for defining the scope, purpose, and usage guidelines within your cross-functional team. Our policy should also outline the ways by which individuals or units within your organizations discover, acquire, and implement new Gen AI software and tools. Keep in mind that many of our end users are actively using AI tools and looking to expand the ways they can use them. What process do you want them to follow for security and legal review and AI oversight? These should be addressed in your AI policy and standard operating procedure. Your policy team should also consider the impact of legal frameworks, which are developing globally. The European Union has a comprehensive AI act. The United States has issued a substantial executive order on artificial intelligence, and many other national and state regulations are under consideration. For most of us, our policies need to encompass some or all of this legislation as well. Okay, we've covered a lot of material. Let's wrap this up and leave you with a few important thoughts. We're at a very interesting moment in seeing tools with astounding potential evolve almost daily. Many of us want to dive in quickly, but cautiously. Get most of the advantages while minimizing most of the risk. How can you do this? First and foremost, develop a comprehensive AI policy. Pick your team and get started on this now. Second, invest in training and education. We need to understand the technology and its risks to gain the Gen AI advantage. And not just a select few, our leadership, our technologists, and our end users. Anyone who is using AI should have training. Third, embrace the change. We should encourage a corporate culture that safely and transparently embraces innovation. AI should be seen as a tool to enhance creativity and efficiency. Finally, stay informed and be agile. The world of generative AI is evolving rapidly. Keep abreast of advancements, regulations, and current strategies. Policy, training, adoption, and self-education. Get the advantages, minimize the risks. Thanks for watching. To learn more about the power of AI and how to implement AI securely at your organization, register for AIS 247, AI Security Essentials for Business Leaders at sans.org or visit the link below. Thanks for watching.